Today we're going to look at the next step of sequences and series. We're going to look at how we can determine if they are divergent or convergent. And one of the methods, the two methods that we're going to look at today are the integral test, and then we're also going to look at the comparison test. We have looked at two methods of this already. The first one was if it's a geometric series, and the second one was in the divergence test that we checked at the very end of class on Monday. So this is just two more methods. Most series that we're looking at will not end up falling into being a geometric series, a purely geometric series. So that's why we need to have a couple other tests that we're going to look at. So the integral test, the first thing I want to look at is let's look at a couple um, series that we have, and then we're going to figure out what the integral test actually is and how we can use it. So the first series we're going to look at is 1 over n squared. And we look at this as 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared, and so on and so forth. If we do the partial sums of this, you can start to see that the series actually does look like it's going to a specific number. It's going to like 1.64, or approximately right around there. If we look at it in terms of an integral, now remember, the integral of a function is going to give me everything underneath that curve. But a series and a sequence is like actual distinct values. It's not the entire function under the curve. So we're going to change it to 1 over x squared so we can actually draw the curve. And then my series is the little boxes underneath. Those are my, that's, well, so, and then I'm going to add those together. So as you can tell, these boxes are getting a lot smaller. So the base of the rectangle is 1 because that's every space we're going to go one spot. And then the height is going to be whatever that one would be. So when I plug in 1, I would get 1. So that's where that goes to. If I plug in 2, I would actually get 1 fourth. And 3 would be 1 ninth. And 4 would be 1 sixteenth. So as you can see, that's going to be the area under those boxes. So when we're looking at those, if I do the integral of 1 to infinity, the integral is obviously going to be bigger than the sum of those boxes, because there's a lot of space between the boxes and that curve. So when I do the integral from 1 to infinity, it's going to obviously be bigger than my series is. So if that converges to a number, then I know my series also has to converge to a number. So if I look at the integral from 1 to infinity, and I do that one out, I'm going to end up getting 1 for that. So because if I plug in 1, the integral of 1 over x squared is 1 over x. And when I plug in infinity to that, I get 0. Or, and then I plug in 1, I get negative 1. And I'm subtracting that, so it's negative 1. So if we look at it, when I do the integral of this part, from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x from 1 to infinity. So negative 1 over infinity is 0. And then it's minus negative 1 over 1. So that'd be plus 1. So that answer equals 1 plus the 1 in front. So that would be 2. So I know that my integral converges to 2. So that means my series has to be something less than 2. So that gives me a lot of really good information because if when we learned in the last section was if a series is bounded, which means it doesn't go any higher than a value, and it is either increasing or decreasing, that means that it's convergent because it's got to be between those values. So in this function, I know this function is always increasing because all the values are positive, so I'm always going to be adding something more to it. And I know it's bounded, and I know it's got to be less than 2 because that's what my integral gave me. So since this function, or this series, is both bounded and increasing, it's a monotonic sequence, therefore this series converges. And I know it's going to be something less than 2. I just don't know exactly what it's going to be. Now let's look at another one. We have 1 over the square root of n. 
And if you look at this one, if I just do some partial sums, this one seems to be divergent. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger. But let's actually show that using the integral test. So if we look at this one, notice these boxes are outside of the series. Because if I plug in 1, I'm going to get a box of 1. And that's what that area is. And that's actually bigger than the series or the function is going to be. So when I do the integral of this function, 1 over the square root of x, it's going to give me a value that's going to be less than what my series is going to be. So if I do the integral from 1 over the square root of x, the integral of 1 over the square root of x, that ends up coming out to be 1 half the square root of x. So when I do that one, that one right there, if I did that one from 1 to infinity, that is going to be infinity. So therefore, I know my integral diverges. So if the integral diverges, if that function diverges because it goes to infinity, and these boxes for the series are higher than it, then that also means that that series has to diverge. So when we get to here, we can start looking at what the actual integral test takes. And it's based on the two problems that we just looked at. If the integral from 1 to infinity is convergent, then my series is also going to be convergent. If the integral from 1 to infinity is divergent, then my series is also going to be divergent. The integral test works on pretty much every series we're going to deal with. The downside is you have to do the integral of it. So when you make it into a function, it has to be something easily integratable. Otherwise, this becomes a lot more complicated to deal with. But since it works for them all, that's why we cover it first. So let's look at a couple examples. So we're going to test the series 1 over n squared plus 1 and see if it's convergent or divergent. So the one major piece that I have to do to be able to do the integral test is the function has to be continuous, so there can't be any breaks in it. It has to be positive, which means it has to be um, all positive values, and it has to be decreasing on 1 to infinity. So that means that every value is going to be get, the next value is going to get smaller and smaller. If it's increasing, we know automatically that it's going to be um, divergent because that's actually what the test for divergence was. So when we're doing the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1, we end up getting the the integral of that is tangent negative 1 of x. Now, if we do 1 and infinity in that one, if I plug in 1 to that, I'm going to get pi over 2. And as tangent goes to infinity, we get pi over 4. Oh wait, sorry, pi over 2. So it's 90 degrees. So it's pi over 2. And when I plug in 1, that's to the pi over 4. So I get pi over 2 minus pi over 4, which is pi over 4. So that means that the this integral goes to a specific value. It goes to pi over 4. So that integral is convergent. So therefore, we know that the original series that I was looking at, the 1 over n squared plus 1, is also convergent. Now we're going to look at one of the most um, useful series. We're going to look at the p-series. The p-series is 1 over n to an exponent. This allows me to do a lot of the comparison testing, which we're going to do in a little bit. If we look back at our the first two problems that we did, the very first problem was a p-series. We did 1 over n squared, and we showed that that was convergent. The next one we did was 1 over the square root of n. 
and we showed that that one was divergent. This is also a p-series. It's 1 over n to the 1 half power. So when we look at the p-series, if p is greater than 1, this series is always going to be convergent. If it's less than or equal to 1, it's going to be divergent. And if we think about the integrals of those, if I have an integral of 1 over x squared, that's going to be negative 1 over x. And as that goes to infinity, that is going to give me um, 0. That's going to be convergent. When I did the integral of 1 over x, that's ln of x. And if I plug a value into that, if I go to infinity in that one, that one goes to infinity. So you can see how that 1 is the breakpoint for it. As anything greater than 1, I'm still going to have a fraction and a division. Anything less than 1 or equal to 1, I'm going to get something that's going to be bigger than um, 1. It's not going to be a fraction. The variables are going to be the denominator. So I'm not going to go to 0. So if we have 1 over n to the third, because 3 right there is greater than 1, this series is convergent. And this one's very similar to the one we looked at with the square root, except it's a cube root. Since the cube root is less than 1, or the 1 half third is less than 1, therefore that series is divergent. So let's look at another series. We have ln of n over n. We're going to see if this one converges or diverges. So the first thing we have to do is we have to determine if it's positive, continuous, and decreasing. Those are the, we have to do that before we can do the integral test. So we know it's positive. All those values are going to be positive. We know it's continuous because the numbers I'm plugging in, there's no zero in the denominator. However, I don't know if it's always decreasing. To figure out if the function is decreasing, we do its derivative because the derivative is always going to tell me my slope. The derivative is then, as long as the derivative is always positive, or sorry, if the derivative is always negative, it is going to be decreasing. So my slope is decreasing. So we do the derivative of this. We have to do the um, division rules. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom. So it's x times 1 over x minus the derivative of the top time or the derivative of the bottom times the top. So that's where they get the ln of x over the bottom squared. So that's the x squared. So we have 1 minus ln of x over x squared. Now, is that always decreasing? So is that always going to be negative? Well, the bottom is never going to be negative. That's the x squared. That's always going to be positive. So ln of x has to be bigger than 1 for it to be decreasing. So if I'm plugging in 1 to this problem, ln of 1 is 0. So there's got to be a value here that makes this bigger than 1. And when we look at this, the only value that when that works is x has got to be greater than e. Once the function is greater than e, we know it's decreasing. Now, the integral test does not state the function has to be decreasing from the beginning all the way over. It just has to be decreasing as we go out to infinity, because that's really what we care about at the end, is where it goes out to infinity. So in this case, after e, after x is greater than e, this function is going to be decreasing. So we can do the integral test on this one as long as x is greater than e. So we do the integral on this one, and the integral on this one is going to be ln of t squared divided by 2. That right there goes to infinity. We're really looking for things, the variables to be in the denominator to get to zero. So pretty much if there's a variable in the numerator, it's going to probably go to infinity. So in this case, this is an improper integral, is divergent. So therefore, my series is also divergent by the integral test. The next test that we're going to look at is the comparison tests. The comparison tests allow me to look at a function or a series that is convergent 
and compare it to another series that I don't know if it's convergent or divergent. But there's certain rules that apply to these. So if we look at this series, 1 over 2 to the n plus 1, that one looks kind of like a geometric series. It kind of looks like 1 over 2 to the n. However, there's that plus 1 there, and that means it's not actually a geometric series. And there's no way for me to be able to make it a geometric series. However, they look really similar. So I think if the 1 over 2 to the n is convergent, then the 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 probably is convergent too, because they're very similar. So we have to look at them to be able to look, use that. So the first thing we want to determine is if that function, the new series that I want to look at, is always either bigger or smaller than the other series that I know already. And I know that 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 is always going to be less than 1 over 2 to the n. That's actually very, very important because if my new series, so if we look at just a quick little graph here, so this one blue and this one red. If this is my red series, oh, sorry, the other direction. So if this is my red series here, and I know my blue one is always got to be under it. If the red one converges and goes to a number, and the blue one never goes above it, therefore the blue series also has to be converted because it has to go to a specific number that's somewhere less than it. That goes back to where we're talking about a bounded sequence. So I know it's always going to be less than something that I know is already bounded, so therefore it has to be bounded as well. I'm not going to be able to figure out exactly what it's going to go to or what it's converging to, but in this case, all I'm really caring about is a convergent or not. So this series is less than this one. So therefore, that series is going to be convergent as well because it's always less than it. So the comparison test has two very specific things. The one caveat to this one, just like with everything else, is the series has to be positive terms only. So no negative values, doesn't bounce back and forth. They're all positive. If the series that I'm comparing it to is convergent and my new series that I want to compare is less than my convergent series than the new one, the a to the n is also going to be convergent, the one that I'm trying to test. If the series that I'm comparing it to is divergent and the one that I want to compare the a to the n is bigger than b to the n, then it is also divergent. If it's the opposite of either of those cases, it doesn't work. So if I know b to the n is convergent, and I know a to the n is always bigger than b to the n, it doesn't give me any information. I'd have to try a different test. Same thing if I know b to the n is divergent, and a to the n is always less than b to the n, it doesn't give me any information about a to the n. So I would have to use a different test for that as well. So it's got to be very, one of those two cases exactly for it to work. So when we're looking at comparison tests, the couple series that we always want to use, because they're very simple, is the p-series, because we know that converges if p is greater than 1, and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1, and the geometric series, because we know the ratio, if it's less than 1, converges, and if it's greater than or equal to 1, it diverges. So those are the two series that we're going to use to compare things to. So if we look at this problem, I have 5 over 2 to the n squared plus 4 to the 4n plus 3. Now, as I'm going further and further out to infinity, the 4 to the n and the 3 kind of drop out and doesn't really matter. So we can eliminate those, and I know that this series that I have, the 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3, has to be less than 5 over 2n squared. So now I can use those as a comparison. I know that 5 over 2n squared is really the same thing as saying 1 over n squared, 
and that's a p-series. That p-series, since 2 is greater than 1, converges. And since this series I now know converges, and it is always the new series that I want to convert is always less than that, that means that my 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3 also converges, and that's because of the comparison test. Let's look at this one. We have 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Now, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 looks very similar to 1 over 2 to the n. And that's true. So 1 over 2 to the n is a geometric series with a ratio of 1 half. So I know that 1 over 2 to the n converges because the ratio is less than 1. However, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 is always bigger than the 1 over 2 to the n. So if this size converges and this is always bigger than it, I don't know anything about this, this series here. All right? I don't know if it converges or diverges because it's bigger than this one, so it doesn't bound it, so there's, it doesn't give me any information. So the comparison test would not work for this series. However, it looks like that series is very close to the other one. So we probably have some general idea that it could be converging. So we have another test that we can use with the comparison tests. It's known as the limit comparison test. What the limit comparison test does is it takes the two series and divides them and finds the limit at limit. As long as the limit goes to a number that is greater than zero, and it's a finite actual number, so not infinity, it goes to an actual number greater than zero, then these series either both converge or diverge. So in this case, if I look at dividing those two, I would get 2 to the n over 2n minus 1. Now, as that's going to infinity, the top, like as it sits right now, I can't plug in infinity to this because I'm going to get infinity over infinity. So we have to divide them all by 2 to the n. And I get top is 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. And as this goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0, so it's going to go to 1. 1 is greater than 0, and 1 is an actual number. Therefore, this limit exists and is convergent because it goes to an actual number. So therefore, since I know that this series is convergent, that means the original series that I was comparing it to, the 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, is also convergent. Because in the limit test, as long as one's convergent and it works, then they're both convergent. If one's divergent, then they would both be divergent. This concludes the lesson for today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. We'll be online from 5 to 6 um, on class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I'll be posting videos for each of the lessons up just before or a little bit before class starts. A couple little things I do want to mention, and I will post these as well. XYZ homework is just designed to give you guys some resources to help. It's not anything different than what we were doing before. I'm not collecting homework. I'm not looking at the homework. However, I do expect people to watch the videos that I'm posting so you guys can get the lessons and material from class and to um, ask questions if you're stuck on things. It, it's a new world. We're trying to figure out ways to deal with it, um, but you still have to be active in class and not just um, try to come take the tests. I do want you practicing the stuff on XYZ, though, for the test because making sure that you know how to actually put the answers in and how they're asking the questions is also very important. So if you get stuck on those, please feel free to hop into class um, on Tuesdays or Thursdays and ask those questions or send me emails at any point and I'll be able to respond to you at that point as well. Thank you and I'll see you on Tuesday.